What's going on everybody, this is DK Dynamite, and today we're gonna be talking about the new hidden updates in DMZ, some unannounced features, and even more, definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and let me know down below in the comment section, have you guys returned to Almazra over in DMZ, or are you guys focusing more on Ashika Island, or are you just racking up some Building 21 key cards so you guys can play that when the map does return every single Friday, and of course last throughout the duration of every weekend. Let me know how you're feeling about DMZ down below in the comment section, but as you guys have probably seen over in the in-game item shop, for COD 2.0, we have the brand new Purple Jolt Tracer Pack. One of the cooler looking bundles here in the game and one of a few Tracer Packs offered here for Modern Warfare 2. The bundle does look amazing. I mean, blue is more of my color, but you guys out there might love cover a little bit more. This does cost 2,400 COD points featuring a skin here for Callisto. We also have a blueprint here for the M4, the Helotrope, and we also have a blueprint for the RPK, both of which come with Purple Tracer Fire and a shocking Purple Electric Death Effects. We also have the Smack Attack Finishing Move, a Vehicle Skin, a regular weapon charm the bolt shock as well as an animated emblem known as the purple voltage a pretty cool looking pack that does emphasize the fact that cosmetics are getting much much better here throughout modern warfare 2 cosmetics really weren't the best throughout season 1 when it comes to the battle pass or the bundles but they've drastically improved here with our brand new season but moving over into dmz now we do have an awesome afghan update as you guys are probably aware if you played regular br on almazra the actual plane crash that we saw in modern warfare 2 2009 has been added to this version of afghan over at satik caves which What's weird about this though is the season 2 launch trailer does depict that plane being shot down and landing here where it should have been but I thought that was implying we were going to end up seeing live events in every match whether it's for Battle Royale or DMZ it probably would have made more sense for DMZ but let me know how you're feeling about that idea down below. Something like the live events we would have in the HQ space from World War 2 2017 or live events like we got in Warzone 1 every other couple of seasons. I mean what happened to those right? Seeing live events in game to celebrate some big reveal. Let's see more of that especially in dmz a mode that i think that would really work well with i mean even taking it as far as future zombies iterations right and having those zombies modes feature live events in game that we just haven't seen before in cod zombies i mean so many cool things that i think call of duty can innovate so much on and i hope that this new era of cod being labeled cod 2.0 does start experimenting a little bit with things like that that i think the community out there would really really appreciate now now tonight's video is sponsored by Clash of Clans. Clash of Clans is a free game set in a fantasy themed persistent world where the player is in charge of a village. Clash of Clans has players build their own village using the resources gained from attacking other players' villages with troops, earning rewards, buying them with medals, or even by producing them at their own village. Now you can join a clan of fellow players or start your own and invite your friends. You can forge alliances with other clans or compete against them in competitive clan war leagues. You can also collect exclusive hero skins and other sceneries to customize your village. Now, if ready to take control of mustachioed barbarians, fire-wielding wizards, or other unique troops, then click on the link in this video's description, pin comment, or the QR code on screen to download the game today. But thank you to Class of Clans for sponsoring tonight's video. What I do like here about Afghan, or classic Afghan, I should say, in DMZ, or even the new Shadow Company inclusions on Ashika Island, is the idea of world building, right? Something we talked about in recent podcasts, where as the Shadow Company starts occupying more and more spaces, whether it's Almazra, Ashika Island, Building 21, we start getting more of that story told, since obviously, as of right now, the post-launch story is only being told through raids in DMZ, not much of multiplayer in Warzone, but finding Shadow Company operatives walk around Almazra now, and maybe them having Building 21 keycards on them that really helps a lot with world building and furthering this post-launch experience i love seeing things like that and i think they can go even further with it in future seasons of dmz in ways that you guys probably didn't expect now, i think it's also important to connect each of our three dmz maps and i think an easy way to do that is by having certain pieces of intel or radios or hearing enemy ai conversations that help bridge the gap better between what's going on in our entire dmz experience now speaking of connecting the experience a lot better there is a new supply cache you can find known as the bomb maker supply cache obviously the bomb maker is the boss you can find over on ashika island he's holding the weapon case it's a part of that map's quest and with that being said there are other new things you can open up using brand new keys here on almazra and you may have actually missed out on these keys if you haven't looted that much or you might not even know where some of these new locations are so i made a previous video talking about all the brand new secret rooms on ashika island and thanks to the website known as dmzmap.net slash ashika island there are people that put together a fantastic interactive map of all secret 
locations you could find not only on Ashika, but also Almazra. And on this website, they updated the Almazra interactive map with the season two updates that you guys probably missed out on. There's the bomb maker supply cache, Captain Silver's briefcase. There's the crash sight weapon case, which we were just by here in the background gameplay. Lieutenant briefcase as well. They were going to show in some footage. We have the SC soldiers foot locker, and we also have the architect's toolbox. Again, that might not be every single new secret update or location here on Almazra, but the ones that have been found thus far, and this website will be updated with every new spot that is found over the next couple of weeks. Now, if you guys are confused on how the keys work, I did discuss them quite a bit in my previous video talking about the Ashika secret rooms or a video I made many months ago talking about all the secret keys that we were able to find on Almazra during the launch window and season one. Obviously, I'll be making follow-up videos to that one every single season with whatever new locations get added here to either Almazra or other DMZ maps that we don't know about yet. Now, there's also what I call the new hidden fortress located by the hydroelectric point of interest here on Almazra, and this is where the lieutenant's briefcase and the architect's toolbox will be located at. So, as you guys will see, there's some crazy PvP action going on here in this area. We ended up having an amazing match of Almazra. In all honesty, I haven't seen too much aggressive PvP action in Almazra DMZ, at least not during the duration of Season 1, but maybe players are looking at DMZ a bit differently now and are playing a bit differently. That's why I started seeing that here with Season 2's Almazra update, but obviously you're not going to see the same close quarters action you would see on the other two DMZ maps, but it was a nice breath of fresh air here on this gameplay, as you guys can see. But upon walking into this fortress, there's a bunch of lore everywhere, laptops, Shadow Company references, Alcatala references, some really cool information here for those out there that are interested in the Modern Warfare 2 lore and that story. But there's this really interesting briefcase sitting right here that you have to have a key to open, and that key can be found, of course, in random loot chest or random AI. It can be found anywhere here on the map, of course, pure RNG. But upon opening the briefcase, you'll see some insane loot worth over $30,000. One of these pieces of loot is called the Tank Hatch Key. Now, the Tank Hatch Key can't really be exfilled with, where you can then put it in your inventory and open something else with it. It's just a piece of loot that dissolves into XP upon exfilling at the end of your match. Although I thought it would have meant something a bit more, I was thinking about maybe a cross-map Easter egg of sorts, where you have to pick up something in one map and use it in another. That would be great, since some of the new faction missions added here in Season 2, which we'll be talking about in a separate video as well, some of the faction missions they added in do require a bit of cross-map gameplay, where you have to do something on one map and then go to another and do the same thing, whatever the case is there. Imagine taking it a step further, where you have to find a piece of loot exclusive in one map and then take that to open a secret room in another. That's something that I'm sure they're working on for a future season, something that I think will really spice up DMZ gameplay a bit and encourage more players out there to try every map available for this brand new game mode. But then there's also the Architect's Toolbox key, as you're going to see I open here in this area. And with that in mind, right, here's what I'll say. When it comes to regaining in DMZ, the fastest method, if it's Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, is Building 21, right? Going in there with a Building Access key card, opening up one of the colored doors to get a bunch of loot, right? Satchels, durable gas mask, high rarity weapons. That's the best method. But if you need to regain from Monday to Thursday, Ashika is probably a better option. I mean, it's just a smaller map and you can get the strongholds quicker. You probably have more keys for some of those secret areas as I talked about in a previous video. But if you happen to have keys for Almazra and you're like, all right, I don't really know where they go, but I need to regain. I want to open up some of those rooms. Again, go to that website I showed you guys, which is linked down below, which has an interactive map of every single secret room that you can go to, which can allow for quicker regain than just randomly looting or killing other enemies to take their Stash. Now, you guys are probably aware that there was a private Activision conference call a couple of weeks ago, right before the launch of Season 2, and during that conference call, quite a bit was discussed about the future of multiplayer and even Warzone, but not much was said about DMZ. I'm sure there's going to be more communication about future DMZ updates in some upcoming blog posts or other conference calls Activision has planned, but here's what was said about DMZ according to Who's Immortal, an individual and a content creator that did attend that conference call. They did say they are considering and looking into a reconnect feature for DMZ, but not to expect it anytime soon. And what's funny about that is that something close to a reconnect, I mean, not quite, but in the ballpark of reconnect feature, did get added in Season 2, as I talked about in a previous DMZ video of mine, and as I talked about in a short that I just posted a few days ago, when somebody backs out or disconnects from a match of DMZ, they now drop their stash, in which you can then pick up their loot, exfil with it, and give it to them during your next infill. 
or let's say it's a random to disconnect it or backed out, you could just take their loot and use it to your advantage. So that's a good step in the right direction. Not quite a reconnect feature, but something, you know what I mean? So I do think by like season three reloaded or season four, hopefully much sooner than that, but definitely the next few months, expect a big reconnect feature to be talked about on a blog post and a roadmap. DMZ is just gonna keep getting better and better. And I can't wait to see what they do with this experience for future Call of Duty games. Will DMZ just get updates here within Modern Warfare 2? Or will they get expanded upon for Treyarch's next game or games after that? So much potential here with what this mode stands for. Now, something that could be comedically referred to as a secret change or a hidden feature in DMZ Season 2 is the fact that the AI actually feels buffed. And I know you guys have been saying that in a lot of the comments in my recent videos. The AI is still a bit off with Season 2. It says that they got nerfed in many areas of the game, but upon looking at certain parts of Ashika Island, even Almazra now, the AI feels even harder. So it's unclear what's going on with that, but it's turning a lot of people off from DMZ, which I'm not a fan of. I want everybody out there to enjoy the mode, to give it a chance. There's so much potential with it and a lot of replayability with the mode in all honesty, but that difficult AI just isn't sustainable for people out there that don't play in full three-man squads. If they want to go in solo, they should be able to do that. So if you're not going to add in a solo or dual option with toned down AI, at least nerf down AI across the board so that if trios will be the only mode that you can play DMZ in, it feels a little bit more fair for all players that want to give the mode a chance. Now, I will be making a separate video talking about the brand new faction missions here in DMZ Season 2, but as a bit of a teaser for that video, there are four new operator skins you can unlock by doing some of the new challenges across Crown, Legion, Black Mouse, and White Lotus, and for those out there that wanted that M13 blueprint that the chemist was holding in DMZ Season 1, you could still go ahead and kill the chemist, extract with that blueprint, and keep it in your stash, but now you can unlock that blueprint to use in Multiplayer or Warzone 2 by doing one of the challenges that is a part of the new Crown faction. Again, you have to own Mono Warfare 2 to get access to that fourth faction here for DMZ. We'll be talking more about that in a separate video, of course. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the brand new hidden updates here in DMZ? How are you feeling about the unannounced features that may be coming really soon and everything else we discussed? Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.